Yeah, okay. And and in terms of uh, the banking crisis over in Italy and Europe, Harry, what, what's your take on that? How, how close do you think we could be to a global impact? I mean, if one of these banks goes down in Italy, or I mean, if Deutsche goes down, I mean, what, what, what is the effect of that? And is it really going to be something that's going to come to fruition soon, do you think? Yeah, I, I do think so. And the stock market, stocks of these banks are reflecting it. I agree, you know, with, with uh, that, that, you know, the political environment's only going to get worse and more chesty. But look, we've already seen Brexit. What do the markets do? Go up. Already seen Trump. Thought it's going to be bad. Go up. We've just seen the, the Italian election. No. Supposed to be bad. Goes up. So that's not going to kill the markets. The markets are on crack. They're on a high. They, 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 they want to go up. There's nowhere for people's money to go. It's going to take something real like a major bank going down. So what? that's what I put. I think China is the biggest risk and impact down the road because their bubble and overbuilding and real estate bubble is beyond anything in all of modern history. And I've studied modern history in depth. But all you need is one big trigger like the subprime crisis in the United States. People don't realize that was four states, California, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, most of that four states. And next thing you know, you got a worldwide stock collapse and recessions and banking and debt problems around the world. It was just a trigger for a debt crisis and a demographic crisis already in motion. So I think, I've been saying the most likely trigger in the first half of 2017 is an Italian default or a Deutsche Bank default and a whole thing about are we gonna bail them out or not? Is Merkel gonna bail them out? Is Germany gonna bail out? And, and the, the you know Eurozone gonna bail out Italy? And I think, no, yeah, Merkel will probably have to bail out on Deutsche Bank at some point, begrudgingly. And, and Italy will have to bail out their banks begrudgingly, but Italy doesn't have the firepower to do it. So I think when the markets see that, okay, that, that's what, you know, that, that's the reality for the crack addict, okay? You can't just keep taking more crack here. You can't, quantitative easing isn't gonna offset that sort of crisis. And even if they do start to ease again in Europe, United States and elsewhere, they're gonna be on a lag in, in, in the European politicians, especially Merkel, are going to fight this at first. Nobody wants to set a precedent for bailouts for Deutsche Bank or Italy. And of course, Greece never has gotten out of its crisis or, or Cyprus and Portugal's right behind them and Spain's right behind them. And, and like you say, Germany is growing against, you know, bailing out. France is growing against the Eurozone. So is Italy. I mean, sooner or later, the euro is going to blow. I, I don't see any way around it. And, and I think in the United States, we got a different problem where I said earlier, I think major blue state blocks like the West Coast are going to say, we can't live in Trump America with these super, super conservative socialist policies and separatism and anti-trade and tariffs and stuff. Hey, Silicon Valley wants to trade with Asia, damn it. And I think they're going to have to break up. I think we could have a, a, some sort of civil break up in the United States and, and stuff. So I, I think there's major stuff coming. I, all I keep warning, Ross, is that my long-term indicators, and of course increasing short-term indicators, say the next three years is likely to be the worst three years for the economy since 1930 to 33. That's what my indicators are telling me. And they're rarely wrong. They can be early or something, but they're rarely wrong. And they're like I showed earlier, they're all pointing down. There is, to me, there's no soft landing out of this. And, and the one country that has no chance of a soft landing at some point is China. They, they are so overbuilt. They don't need to build another anything, infrastructure, housing, offices, malls, railways, anything for the next 12 years even if they continue to urbanize as fast as they're urbanizing. And, and people didn't notice in 2015, for the first time, rural migrants into the cities there, illegal, um, unregistered rural migrants, actually went back home and, and, and reversed the trend. China's used to be building stuff for future people coming into cities. Now there's really nobody coming into cities and their bubble's gonna burst. So, so I, I do not have a good view at all, especially the next three years. And I think you get aftershocks for three years after that before some of the key demographics turn up again. So I think the next three to six years is going to be very difficult, period. I don't see any way around it. No bridge over troubled water.